Howdy gang and welcome to your 30th Vue.js tutorial and in this video we're going to take a look at checkbox binding. Okay, so in the last tutorial we went ahead and started our blog by creating this component, add blog, which is a form to add a new blog post and we had a look at this V model where we could bind to input fields. Now that's cool, but I want to take this one step further now and add some checkboxes right here. Say for example, we want to pick a category of this blog post and we want to select one or maybe more checkboxes. So I want to show you how we can bind two checkboxes so that when we click a checkbox, that's stored in some kind of property and we can keep track of that. So what we'll do is add a new section underneath this text area for the checkboxes, right? So we'll do a little div first of all with an ID equal to checkboxes. And then inside that, we need to create a series of different checkboxes for the categories of the blog. So I'll do a label first of all for each checkbox. So the first one is gonna be for ninjas. And I'm gonna do all the labels first of all, so then I can just do the checkboxes afterwards. So I'll copy and paste that four times. And then the second category is gonna be wizards. Uh, the third one is gonna be uh, Mario. And the last one is gonna be Okay, these are some random categories, but I don't care. We just want some inputs now for these of type checkbox. So type equals checkbox. Um, I'm having a spelling kind of a problem at the minute whereby I just can't spell words. So do bear with me. Anyway, the value for this one is going to be equal to something or other. We'll fill that in in a minute. And we're also going to attach a V model to this as well. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute. For now, I'm just going to copy and paste this a few times down here. So we've got four checkboxes like so. Okay, then. Now, how is this going to work? Basically, what we're doing is attaching a V model property to each one of these individual checkboxes, right? So does this need to be a different V model for each one? For example, ninjas, uh, wizards, and then something else, and then something else. Well, no, that's not the way this works. And this is where Vue.js starts to become a little bit magic because it takes care of a lot of things for us behind the scenes. So all we need to do is pass in one V model into these things right here. So they're all the same. And we're going to store this on a property called categories on the blog object. Remember, we have the blog object stored on this thing down here. So we could add another thing in that object called categories. And because we could add one option for the blog or even two categories for the blog, uh, there could be a list of things, right? So this makes sense if we have an array for the categories, right? And we're storing which imports we want to store in this array. So let's do that for now. And then let's add blog.categories to the V model. So now what we're doing is attaching these checkboxes to this categories property on the blog object, right? Which is stored down here as an array. So what Vue.js now is gonna do for us is when we click this checkbox and it's checked, it's gonna add whatever the value of this is here to that array. Awesome, right? So now, for example, I could do ninjas here, and then down below here, I could do this one, which is wizards. Then I could do Mario, and finally, cheese, okay? So if we click this import, so it's checked, it's gonna add this to the array. If we also click this, it's gonna add this to the array. If we unclick this, it's gonna take away this from the array. So now we can store which categories are checked in this array, and they're gonna be stored as strings. So that is pretty awesome. Vue.js is taking care of a lot of the kind of background work for us here. So let us just have a look, first of all, how this is in a browser. I wanna refresh. So I, and first, it helps if we save then refresh. Now we have these input boxes, but I just wanna make them look a little bit better. So just a couple of lines of CSS are needed. And uh, they're also on the GitHub repository. I'm just gonna type these in because it's only a couple of rules. So first of all, checkboxes. This is the ID we used above for the div containing all the checkboxes. Input, so each one of the input fields, each one of the checkboxes, we're gonna display as inline hyphen block, and then also give them a margin hyphen right of 10 pixels, cool. One more, checkboxes, 
label. We want to style up the labels as well so they're not left out. And we're just going to display those as inline block two. So voila, this should look a bit better next to each other like so. Okay, cool. So now we've done that. What about outputting these to the preview area? Because right now, if I click this and I click this, there's no way to see that this date has been added. Yep, it has been added to this array, but we can't see that. There's no physical way of seeing that. And I want to see it in this preview section. So now we've added them, let's output them here in the preview section. So I'm going to come under blog content and do a P saying blog categories colon. And then underneath here, I'm going to do a UL and each LI in this UL is going to output whichever categories are in. So if it's wizards and cheese, like over here, then there'll be a LI for wizards and an LI for cheese, right? Now, I can't hard code those because I don't know what's been added at the time. We need to dynamically output these. So if we have an array of data and we want to output that array of data, we want to cycle through it, what can we use? Yep, we can use V4 to cycle through data. That's in a previous tutorial. Skip back to that if you've forgotten about it. But essentially, we can just say V-4 is equal to, then we can say category. I'm making this name up right here. It's just singular for categories because this is called categories, right? So category in categories. This is going to cycle through that array, and then we can output the category right here, except it's blog dot categories right because it's stored on this blog object so now i can output the category right here each time around so it's given us this each time it cycles through and we can output that item right there so if i save this now then we can see blog categories right here and if i start to add different categories it's going to add them to this property categories on the blog object we're cycling through them and it's going to output each one right here Okay, if I unselect them, it's going to take them off the array. Therefore, we don't see them on the page. So there we go. That is how we bind to checkboxes. And uh, in the next video, we're going to do some more data binding. This time, it's going to be on select boxes. I'll see you guys then.